theatre mm -hmm. and like sort of large classical scenes and religious scenes and he became sort of most famous through like old pieces when he first mm -hmm. started working. Which I've seen one of those in Antwerp, I think it's The Descent from the Cross and it was one of the first paintings of Rubens that I experienced in real life and in situ and it was just like absolutely mesmerising, like mm -hmm. I'm not really um, a tremendous fan of religious painting for the most part, but that painting like in situ is just absolutely spectacular, like and yeah as you said like it's, this is quite a surprising painting, it's quite uncommon. Yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's what people picture when they picture Rubens, it's no. usually um, some kind of sea of bodies all interconnected mm -hmm. in some ways like through touch or object or pattern or they're very full um, paintings whether that be through like the presence of a lot of people or a lot of stuff yeah it. um and they're I, quite maximalist like every, every every like inch and corner like feels like everything's like crammed in mm. and there's movement in them a lot of like <clears throat> even if it's a larger one of one of his works that is set in a landscape the, the figures often in movement and filling the space mm -hmm. and you know sort of they are the presence like they're the most important thing in the work um so there's sort of bit of historical painting uh, historical context on landscape painting in, in reference to rubens and where he sits um because landscape painting didn't just come from nowhere and it definitely wasn't an important genre even in his lifetime mm -hmm. so in Renaissance Italy, the painting of landscape was considered a speciality of the northern painters, which is obviously based down the line that would be where we'd put Rubens, as he was from Antwerp. And Michelangelo was said to have remarked to a friend and poet of the northern, talk about the northern painters, <coughs> they paint stuff and masonry, the green grass of the fields, the shadow of the trees and rivers and bridges, which they call landscapes, with many figures on this side and many figures on that. And all this, though it pleases some persons, is done without reason or art, without symmetry or proportion, without skillful choice or boldness, and finally, without substance or vigour. <laughs> so that's outrageous. what Italy thought about landscape painting. That's outrageous. That's, um, yeah, that's pretty shocking. It was too scathing a quote to not include. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty bold. It's a bold choice. Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, like, um, without... With no vigour or substance, I mean, that's... No skillful choice. That's painful, yeah. I mean, I find that um, highly disagreeable. Quote. Yeah, but it's important, <laughs> it's important to realise, because we say landscape wasn't a high form of art. Yeah. But like, it wasn't just that it wasn't a high form of art, it was... <laughs> it was a very low form of art. It was almost considered not art. It says, without reason or art. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like they had a very bad experience with... Yeah. Bumping into a landscape painter at the fish market. Yeah. So um, the emergence of true landscape, i.e. without it simply being a backdrop to a religious scene or a mythological story, began with Joachim Patne and Pete Bruegel, the elder, of about 1520 onwards. So we think about Rubens passing away in 1640. It's mm -hmm. not a huge, mm -hmm. that's not a huge span of time between the earlier northern landscape painters and Rubens' works. 